On the line, buzzradio.net podcast, also going live to uh, iTunes Radio. I've got uh, Wes from The Armager. What's up, Wes? How's it going, everybody? What's going on? <laughs> Everything's cool. Everything's cool. Just working out the kinks here. Uh, working on the Mac yeah. OS. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm having some trouble myself. But uh, glad you're on here, man. Uh, we had a brief storm that came through, dropped some hail and lightning, and uh, good thing we didn't lose our power, but... Uh, I don't know how it is over in Chino Hills. Yeah, definitely. Where are you guys based out of? Brea. Oh, okay. That's not that far away. Down the street. Right down the street. Anyways, yeah. I just wanted to explain to the people where I met you. Uh, I saw the armature play at uh, Shamrocks over there in uh, Chino Hills. Was blown away. Really, I mean, it's a really, they put on a really good show. Yeah. And what it, it. what it reminds me of is I come from the old 80s punk days. When they used to jump into the crowd and just sing, and you know, it just reminded me of like that raw, you know, connect with the people watching, and just it was a kick-ass show, dude. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad you liked it, man. Appreciate it. Come, we've come a long way. I mean, we kind of started off like really kind of rough because none of us had really been in a band besides my old bassist and uh, my my drummer right now, and. So like the three of us, my two guitarists and myself are kind of like new to everything. So within the past year, we've really kind of grown and progressed and really that was one of our main focuses was trying to make sure we had a good stage presence because, you know, we want to give everyone something cool to watch while we're up there. Right. Yeah, I mean, definitely oh, it was great. Um, basically, uh, when, how long have you guys been around? I mean, I don't know when you guys started and give us like a, gr- a brief background of where it all started. Yeah, we've been together uh, a year. Uh, we've been se- we've been together since August of 2010. So uh, within that time, we we've kind of we've gotten a couple of different sponsorships. You know, we've we've kind of gotten our names out there a little bit better, and uh, nice. we've been playing a lot of shows lately too. We we it was kind of rough finding like you know similar genres to play with because right. you know there's metalheads out there that are like very narrow minded with the kind of music <laughs> they like. Right. So. Uh, you know, it, when we're not playing, when we're not playing like this scream out stuff that everyone's so used to hearing. It's kind of different for people at first, but I think we got we got in the right vein with like our, our crowd and the right kind of people we're trying to reach and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, it's, it's been a, it's been a long first year for sure. Uh, I noticed you get you guys put out an EP, right? Yeah, we just uh, we got our EP last. Uh, January and I think we released it in April or March or one of those and uh, it took us like maybe five different five different studio sessions where the first one we're just laying down nothing but drums and then all of us were just trying to track a song in a day so we didn't have very much time to do it we had a really like low budget doing making it and everything but I think what we came out with was was pretty was pretty all right for a demo you know we like we uh We've kind of been working with a lot of different people to try and get it out there and stuff like that too. So it's 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 uh it's coming along. And then we got another CD that we're trying to release pretty soon too. We're we're trying to get back in the studio and uh put some new material that we got on a uh, you know on some tracks for us. Oh nice, nice. So you guys yeah. are in the process of writing new stuff. That's good. Um, yeah. I d- I wanted to ask you. I kind of got sidetracked here. The meaning of the word of your band name, the Armager. Oh yeah. Um, we uh, we really just wanted a name that no one had yet, because I mean, when you're first starting out a band and you're trying to figure out what kind of name to do, you don't want something that's too like pussy. So, you know, everyone's very <laughs> particular about how it is. You know, so right. 
wanted something that sounded kind of strong and i was i was just on the internet looking up different like words and stuff like that and i was i was on a page for latin phrases and uh, i saw what it meant it's a person that like bears arms and stuff like that or any sort of person that has like a like a shield or one of those emblems for their family crest you know oh, nice, and stuff. Yeah. They, they call our major's family i don't know but uh, cool. it it kind of it kind of just felt right, and you know when I looked it up, no one else had it, and at least no one to my knowledge like yet. So right. you know it's kind of worked out best. It hasn't really been hard finding you know like the Armager Facebook dot com slash the Armager the Armager dot com or whatever you know. It's, That's pretty cool, dude. Really it's, been used it's very unique. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um, so we, what, we, we had ahead. a lot of a couple different names. Oh, go ahead. But no, Sorry. go ahead. What were, what were some of the different names? We had a couple different names, and like you know, it was kind of just messing around for a while. We were gonna call it Apophis for a while, and Tundra was in there, and it was a bunch of all, all this. It was kind of just everywhere, you know. And we wanted something that didn't sound like super gay, and we weren't like <laughs> embarrassed to tell people when or you know, like right. ask what band we're in and stuff. Yeah, that's understandable. Um, <laughs> so, what type of music would you describe that you guys play? I don't, I don't. I mean, it's it's metal, but I mean, if you want to get specific, it, I, I guess you can call it like alternative metal because we're not really in there. I'm, I mean, I'm not really a scream or anything like that. I do a lot of kind of mixed vocals with it. I, I do a lot of kind of gravelly stuff, and then I don't know. I, I get. I've been called a blues kind of guy, and then my guitarist has definitely kind of got some blues influence going on too. So it's kind of we pull a lot of different vibes with our genre. You know, we we don't really know what to call it. I just um, say groove metal. You know what? Exactly that. It is like more of a groove metal. I mean, when I saw you guys, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, you get into it, you can feel that groove, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And our it, ca it comes a lot from our drummer, you know. He, he's really well trained and stuff, and he he's really mindful about what kind of a vibe we're giving off to the crowd, you know, and he wants that like really heavy energy going along with our songs and the choice of songs for the show and stuff like that, so... Mm -hmm. I think when we kind of plan it out like that, it works for the best. Now, did you want to talk about that? You're looking for a bass player, or yeah, um, get that out. You know, there. we're we we just lost our bassist, and uh, he uh, he quit. He had a bunch of different scheduling issues and stuff, and we're really dedicated. That's that's one of our main things. You know, we we treat it very seriously. It's it's not just kind of like a side project for any of us. Like I, this is my main focus, and in uh, our bassist has got to be somebody that's got to be able to you know practice a lot he's got to be within the area you know he's got to be very focused on you know what we're trying to achieve and he's got to be very goal oriented as we are and you know, just easy to work with so if there's anyone out there that you know thinks they can meet the match or whatever and likes what we're trying to do that i'm more than welcome to hear from anybody so now where can they reach, I mean, you, reach you guys uh, you can get a hold of us on our email through uh, Yahoo at the Armager Metal at yahoo.com. You can find me on Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash the Armager. You'll find my profile and everything up there, too, so you can get, get a hold of me pretty directly. Nice. Um, yeah. I, you, I'll throw my number out there, too, if they okay. want it. You know, don't, oh, it's 909-576-6879. So give me a call. I hope I don't get any weirdos. Give me call them for a good calls. time. <laughs> yeah. <exactly. laughs> uh, let me see now. So you got your EP out. Um, now you're throwing that out at the shows, or do you have any free load or free load? <laughs> any free downloads that people can like hit up? Yeah, uh, you can go on our Reverb page. I'm pretty sure we got that all available for download. ReverbNation.com slash the Armager. It's got a couple songs up there. Those are the ones that we actually like listen to and like still. Or uh, if you want uh, the full EP, you can always go online. You weren't able to find it, but I mean. Uh, right. I'm pretty sure you can get it on there, thearmager.bandcamp.com. And uh, if there's a problem, I'll, I'll go in there and try and check it right now and see what's up. But you should be able to get our full EP. If not, just be able to listen to it online. If And then uh, on top of that, we usually have a couple copies at shows, but we're running low on supplies, so we got to start burning some more, I guess. We had some really nice... We had some really nice, like printed up ones and stuff, you know, to give out to people. But I think I got. Now we're just kind of going good. Yeah, we we're kind of going old school now and just burning them. So hey, we'll see how works, that goes. Yeah. And then yeah, we we don't want to spend a bunch of money on it yet because we'd rather put it into our recording and stuff, and then you know do that, do a whole another EP and print that up and stuff like we did with the last batch. Right. We got like a thousand of them, so I mean we've done a pretty good job of getting our stuff out there. I mean we're we're already out of CDs now, so. Oh, that's good. Hey, I was going to ask you, what's your personal preference or influence, <clears throat> musical influence? 
You know, it's it's uh it's really weird. When I was a kid, I used to listen to nothing but rap. Uh, oh, and really? then I kind of had yeah, I had a lot of like metal and rock and all sorts of different influences from my parents. So that kind of carried with me a little bit. And then my first my first two CDs I ever bought were in third grade. I bought the Marshall Mathers LP and Blink 182's Enema of the State. Wow. And I don't know, it's it's a uh, I've kind of just had like a lot of different musical influences going on. I just right now, I guess uh, you could say I really like like Pantera. Oh yeah. Um, Black Label Society, Metallic, you know, all the all the right. generic metal stuff. But, but what I'm I think I'm most impressed about now is anyone that can get in the mainstream that can actually like sing or actually you know like do you know what they do on the record live you know as opposed to need, you need like a bunch of different computers and all sorts of shit like that to right. fix up their voice and. Uh, I like like Adele right now. She's really she's got an awesome fucking voice for a chick that that's super like fat, you know. Too. And <laughs> I, I, when I first when I first heard her, I was like, holy shit, who is this chick? But I was I'm just surprised, like you know, music like that can even get any airplay just from all the crap that I hear on a regular basis. You know, right. it's all super overproduced, and it's kind of nice to hear something that's not you know, overdone like that, that can still be really good. And I, I think that's kind of what I draw, but just like good music, you know, I'm not really particular about the genre or anything like that. Right. The the new stuff that you're writing now, is it going to be similar to what you've already put out or are you taking a different direction? Well, when we started out, we were more of like a hard rock kind of vibe and we, you know, the older crowd likes that, but you know, it's not really fun to play up there on stage because you know i like i like when i see kids moshing and shit like that and people he head banging and stuff mm -hmm. you don't really get that from rock um but right now we're kind of doing more darker uh more more uh riff oriented metal -y, you know it's kind of right. kind of different change from from where we were in the beginning but we all like it better it's it's more fun to play especially for our drummer and our guitarist and stuff you know it's a lot more it's a lot more uh demanding from them so they dig it and uh i i don't i don't really like I'm, i've never been like the kind of like soft lyrical kind of guy i've always mm -hmm. kind of liked writing like real stuff like that too so it's kind of it's kind of more interesting for me to kind of in your face into something like different. stuff right yeah exactly and yeah, you seem like the i mean I, I don't know you that well but you seem like the kind of in your face type of guy i mean the way you're on stage and stuff and it was it was really cool i mean you guys put on a hell of a show oh, yeah. Thanks, man. But uh, yeah, I just want yeah, to I see. Mean, Go for it. I've always kind of been like the 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 loudmouth, outgoing kind of personality. <laughs> so I mean, it's kind of it kind of took a little bit of coming out of my shell on stage because I'd never really been exposed to anything like that before. But now it's just kind of like just kind of getting in that zone right before, and then just kind of vibing off the crowd. You guys caught us on a really good night. Like we. If the if the crowd wasn't there, you know, and the vibe wasn't right, it would have been just another shitty show. But <laughs> we're really glad. To have, yeah, we were we were really glad to have Sarah Billy in there and stuff. And they brought oh, yeah. the last crowd and I'll meet you guys and stuff there too. And they kick ass. It's nice to have. Yeah, it's nice to have that like really good vibe going. Dude, that on was a good like vibe and, show. I mean, the whole thing was just awesome. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was full of metalheads. That's the right, thing. Right. You don't really find that. You don't really find a big concentration of that anymore. At least, like, I mean, we played at least, you know. 30 shows or something like that in the past year and that's that's pretty spaced out mm -hmm. but i mean you know it's pretty few and far between when you get those nights and when they do happen it's awesome you know like that's when you can really shine and just kind of let loose but it's a whole world of difference when you go to like a bar the next week and there's like five people there you know on a friday <laughs> night for whatever reason and fucking you... it's all just a work like like we went to malone we were at malone's like a last weekend oh, yeah. it's a it's a pretty nice spot it's just like i feel like no one listens to live music anymore or some shit or no one gives a fuck or i don't know but we go there and it's like it's like work parties and shit like that you know it's right. not like the old like you know it's older ladies that are there it's like you know they're just there trying to drink they weren't really there trying to like you know mosh and headbang and stuff <laughs> like that so for for us to be you know doing our thing, it's a little bit more tough as opposed to like you know a more hardcore oriented crowd that can kind of go out and do those shows where they already have kids there that are trying to listen to that kind of music where these bands have a following and stuff like that. Right. But you know, it's just about playing what you like to play. I guess. Who, who did you guys play with at Malone's? You know, there was a whole slew of. Uh, we played with Haster. The, they're oh, okay. they're our buddies too. Let me shout out to them real quick. They're right. a bunch of awesome dudes, but. We didn't really get to stay. A lot of the dudes in our band are under 21, so I mean, we just kind of dipped out afterwards. But there's a there's a couple cover bands there that night, and 
stuff like that. So uh, I I didn't get a chance to hear anything. We were the first ones that got called on, and uh, it was kind of a it was kind of loosely organized. So it wasn't you know we don't really know what the hell was going on to begin with. How did the uh, didn't you guys recently play the Viper Room too? Yeah, that was actually really dope. You know, it's uh, for for bands like us, we got to pay to play, so it's you know it's kind of bullshit to begin with. But that is bullshit. Uh, we. Yeah, we ended up raising the money to do it, and we don't usually like to do shit like that. But you know, the Viper Room just kind of cool, you know, just to like just to hit up the Hollywood spots and say you did it, you know. And right. We played whiskey and stuff like that before too, and had a really good time. But this time was kind of fucked because we didn't really sell our ticket quota that we were supposed to, so we we're pulling out of pocket. So all of us, mm. by the time we got, there, we we're just like, "Fuck, man, it's gonna be <laughs> another bullshit." Oh, you know, it's some shitty fucking spot where no one gives a fuck, you know, just super downtrodden, you know, not right. not our normal selves. We go in there and we didn't really have much of a crowd there that we brought with us, you know, it was just like a couple of close friends and shit like that that were there to support. But then as we started getting into our set, you know, and we were just playing it like we would any show, you know, just pretending like there was a crowd there. And then, sh- like, sure enough, dude, the whole room started to fill up for us and it was kind of nice. nice, like, people coming in off the streets and <laughs> even if they're there their, their bands they were, we were still making them listen to us you know and right. the, afterwards the general manager came out he's all stoked on us gave me his card and the dude at the doors was hitting me up to he wants to record and shit like that you know it's all it's all nice sentiments you never know oh, yeah, going to follow through with what right but uh you know it was it was super cool you know we got it's in hollywood it's kind of like no one really gives a fuck because they've they've seen it all they've oh, heard yeah. it all you know so i remember i go i went up there and i was and I was talking to the doorman right before I said, "It's like, hey man, you want you want a sticker? You know, I'm just being a jackass trying to fun." And uh, he's like, "No, I don't want it." I was like, oh <laughs> shit, you know, I can't even get this guy's sticker, you know. Then <laughs> afterwards, we get off the stage. He's like, "You guys were awesome. Oh my god, you guys were so great. I'm so I'm so excited about you guys and shit." I was like, "Oh, can I give you a sticker now?" He's like, "Oh yeah, for sure." <laughs> but, uh, oh my god, that's funny. Stuff like that to get a little bit of respect, you know, in that in that town and shit. And when they're you know on a Tuesday night when normally no one gives a fuck, it was kind of it was kind of nice. Kind of picked us all up. That's awesome, dude. That's a good story. <laughs> yeah. You guys got any uh, shows planned coming up? Um, on Saturday, we're going to be playing at Coyote Beach in Corona. I've the never that? been there before. I'm not sure. I've, I've never been there. I'm not sure how it's going to be, but uh, uh, we're playing with some band they, they set us up with, and I guess like the one of the guys in there is like a pro BMX pro BMX or something like that, sponsored mm-hmm. by like Monster and Soul. And so, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I don't know who's going to be there, how it's going to work out. We that's, were just hit up kind of last minute. So. That's Saturday? Yeah, that's this Saturday. And then uh, from there, I believe our next one's not going to be till January. And then we're going to be playing with uh, Static Lullaby. They're a local band from out here. And they're doing a tour with some of our buddies at RHC. And nice. uh, we're going to be playing at Chafee January 28th. Where's that? We don't at? know much details yet. Chafee and Chino. Oh, cool. Chino. So that's your, your neck of the woods. Yeah, it's like right down the street from us, as far as I know. So I mean, it should be cool, and we'll have more details up on our website and everything. You guys should uh, um, play Shamrocks again. Yeah, you know what? I was just talking to Scott, the guy that books the shows for us, and uh, he he was talking about setting up. Sh- he wanted us to play this Saturday too, actually, but we weren't able to do it since we already had that other show booked. But he wants to set us up with. Uh, you know, January possibly with some dates and stuff, and we're gonna pull on Cerebellion hopefully, and uh, yes. Aster, and get some more stuff going on like that because that was a good ass time. We had we had fun with them last time, so we yeah, keep them on the definitely next hit up Cerebellion because they want to do like all these crazy shows next year. So I'm sure they'll yeah, be down. It, yeah, definitely. They're a bunch of cool ass dudes. I'm I'm I try and keep in regular touch with all of them. So. We'll see how it goes. We got we got a lot more in store. We we're trying to get some merch printed up right now. I was just having I just had a meeting with the dude to see how much it was going to cost us to get some shirts printed up. But we got a new design uh, on our web on our website and our Facebook by uh, this dude Tony Cole. Really super cool dude. He did a uh, he did some of the artwork for Black Dahlia Murder, Job for a Cowboy. He's done stuff on like movies like Pirates of the Caribbean and shit like that. So. Uh, Really cool dude. Got him to draw us up uh, this like Templar armager looking dude, you know. So mm-hmm. once we get that up on a T-shirt and set up and squared away, we'll have that at our shows and stuff in this upcoming year, and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll be s- swagging people out with some armager stuff. That's, that's awesome, dude. I can't wait to see that. Um, yeah, it would be. Oh, go ahead. No, I was just saying. Yeah, it'd be cool. <laughs> um, and stuff. 
So what are your pre, pre-show pre rituals to get yourself psyched before you go on? Pre-show rituals? You well, first, I, I, I sacrificed four babies uh, <laughs> in in the womb of pregnant women and uh, after a <laughs> – no, I'm just kidding. Um, no, uh, what I like – I don't know. I like to get a couple drinks in me and shit just to right. loosen me up on stage and then, uh, you know, I'll just be kicking and having fun. I try not to like – really psych myself up about shows anymore because i remember when i first started out you know i'd be like, oh this place is gonna be so cool you know we're gonna hopefully there'll be a lot of people there and you're always just hoping for the best you know and then you just kind of get more and more downtrodden as like the year goes on just like fuck i hope right. someone's there for this one but i doubt it you kind of just go into it expecting nothing but then you know when something does happen it makes it all that much more like awesome you know because so, you know you don't really have any predisposed expectations of what the show is going to be so i just try and you know make sure that my voice is right and i'm not smoking or anything like that and i try and i try and uh you know just kind of rest a little bit and you know get myself in the game and kind of put myself in the right mindset to throw on a good show for people that's good man that's good uh uh, while we're on the subject of shows what's the the funniest craziest thing that's ever happened to you guys at a show um, our very first show, I don't know if this is the funniest thing, but it's definitely the creepiest thing. Uh, <laughs> our very first, you know, your, your first show is always kind of, uh, a, a nerve wracking situation. If you've, if you've never even been in a band before and our, uh, drummer Shay, his, his, uh, cousin set us up with this show out in Lake Forest at the Lake House Tavern. Mm-hmm. I know where and that's at. We, yeah. So we, we played out there. We actually played with inhale. They're a really cool ass reggae band from around here too. Nice. But, um, we, we go out there and, you know, I don't know what the fuck to expect. It's just like another dive bar that, you know, and, uh, all the people there are regulars, you know, so if you're, if you're from the, from an, you know, the outside, they kind of know who's, who's not supposed to be there and shit. We totally stuck out. So, uh, <laughs> we, we go over there, you know, we're, we look like a bunch of kids. We're all, like, young at the time. And um, fucking we have, like, maybe four people there for us because it's, like, an hour and a half away from our house, you know. Uh-huh. So it's hard It's hard to get people to, like, drive out there for us. But we had a couple. So we're trying to make the best of it. We're just kind of sitting there going through our set. Halfway through, uh, our my rhythm guitarist is string break. So he's, like, walking <laughs> back and forth on stage trying to figure out how he's going to get a string to play the rest <laughs> of the song. And I'm sitting there trying not to kill myself, you know, I was like, fuck, what is going on? And then we start getting into our set more, and then this really, really old couple starts, like, ballroom dancing to, like, our metal. Like, our you got to be kidding stuff. me. And it's, like, this old lady, and she's got, like, this long gray hair, and she's just kind of, like, doing this weird seductive dance with this old man, and they're just sitting there. So no one's paying attention to us anymore, you know? We're just kind of, like, the band that's playing, and everyone's just, like, watching this huge spectacle these old people are making. And then halfway through our song, Dimitri, she goes up and blows me a kiss on stage, you know, and everyone's just following her, and she, uh, everyone just starts laughing, oh and I'm God. just sitting there trying to, like, do my set, I'm just like, fuck my life, like, you know, you can't look any gay when an old lady's blowing a kiss. <laughs> oh my god, that's like, hilarious. No one's on the floor like that. They're just like, fuck, man. You know, it's nice that she enjoyed our music, but fuck, you know. <laughs> How are you supposed to recover from that, you know? That's great. You don't, have, you don't have much street cred at that point. Now, was this your first show, or...? Yeah, our very, well, our very first show wasn't, we never actually played we got fucked over. There was this, our uh, our lead guitarist. You know, he's he uh, he set us up with uh, some chick that he'd met through another band, and she was trying to book us for this show at the Cannon Garden Grove. Mm-hmm. So she booked. She set us up for the show. It was like November first or whatever. Is like or yeah, it was the night of Halloween. But like we were supposed to go on at like one o'clock. So we're all super nervous. You know, this is like a month before our actual first show so we're trying to like practice and really hone in on everything we totally just wasted a whole night like trying to just make sure we were perfect and so then we drive all the way out to garden grove and uh we get there and it's like this fucking the whole parking lot's empty i'm just like (laughs) what the fuck's going on you know and there's like a couple cars that are in front of like the spot that we were supposed to be playing at and i walk in there and it's this ratty ass bitch that just looks like she's all fucked up on like drugs or something like that. And I was like, hey, uh, 
we're supposed to be going on right now. And I, I, I'm talking and I'm seeing like other bands breaking down their stuff. You know, there's little Asian guys like sweeping everywhere. Like they're like getting ready to close. You know? And so she's like, oh, what, what band were you in? I was like, well, we're in the armature. You know, this is our time. We're, we came like, an, like a half an hour before we were supposed to go on. You know, she's like, oh, well, I didn't know you guys were still going to be doing it because, you know, you haven't really kept in contact with me. I was like, well, my, my guitarist said he talked to you yesterday. She's like, oh, yeah, he did, but he didn't call to confirm it today. And, you know, most, most of the band showed up an hour before. I was like, oh, well, <laughs> they didn't think to call us or anything like that before you oh, just called man. off the show. Well, there was no one really here, so I was like, oh, you're the best fucking promoter I've ever met in this whole, you know, I, I was just so, we were so pissed. We drew, we drew like half an hour. You know what's even better than that? So How you're imitating her voice. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you gotta make her sound like a slob that she is. <laughs> oh, oh. This is big slack off in life, just trying to fuck with kids and ruin their dreams. We're that so... sucks, dude. For a first show, that's it, that's pretty. There's a lot of rough shit that goes on with the band, but you know, it's you seem to remember like the shit that sucks as opposed to the stuff that's awesome. But <laughs> you know, it's, it kind of it kind of gets mixed in a lot there, though, so it evens itself out, and it's you know, you expect it to be tough. It, the The point is, you're just doing what you like to do, and we we fucking we really love this whole this whole thing that we got going on, and it kind of. It's giving us something to do, you know. It's, we don't have to sit around with our dicks in our hands anymore, just <laughs> hoping for something to happen. We can kind of, we can kind of be, you know, the people that are pushing ourselves to to make everything better. We don't have to rely on anyone else. So, I think that's why being in a band's fucking. That's that's a cool part about everything. It's actually being able to kind of control what you want and kind of, you know, micromanage what you need to do and not have to rely on a boss or any sort of like, you know, blueprint for how you're supposed to do it. It's kind of right. just however you're trying to trying to fill in the blanks, you know. So what do you who do you think is the person that drives you guys to, you know, to get this band going? I'm like the I I crack the whip, bro. I mean, I <laughs> I'm I'm kind of I'm the manager, promotion guy. I do all the you know contact stuff and i i kind of i kind of this is my this is my baby you know this is my project and i got shay my drummer to help me out a lot and uh my guitarists and and stuff like that too are pretty supportive of everything so it's, it, it makes it a little bit easier on me just right now we're just trying to focus on uh you know getting the fifth member of the band here so then i can kind of whip them into shape too and, <laughs> and it's it's a big group effort, you know, like I, I'm the one that's kind of like behind the scenes doing stuff, but then I got my guitarist who like basically writes all the riffs and all the melodies right. and stuff like that to the songs along with my drummer and my drummer kind of focuses on the technical aspects of the sound and everything like that and how it's presented and shit like that. So it's, it's kind of a big collective thing, I, but I'd say I, I kind of am at the forefront of most of it. Mm -hmm. That, I mean, it's a lot of work, man. I mean, not only just to get the keep the band together, but to actually get along. You know what I'm saying? Oh, of, yeah. I mean, it's a lot of work. Yeah, and you know, it's it's kind of a fine line at times because it's hard to work with your friends, you know. But right. uh, you know, we we find a good balance, I think, because we're the main point is being able to communicate and shit like that. It sounds kind of gay because it sounds like a relationship. <laughs> it is, dude. Kinda, that's basically what it is you know right. it's, it's just like you gotta you gotta be able to kind of me eye to eye with everybody even if you don't agree and shit like that and that's that's the hard part but once you can kind of get past your ego i think things go a lot easier and i try and stress that True. you know i i have a i have probably the biggest ego out of everyone in the <laughs> band but i try to you know limit myself and not take it too far and you know I'm, i don't think i'm hot shit or anything like that i just I, i'm just i'm just obnoxious and loud you know right. so it's, it's for people to get a word in edgewise at times but you know other than that i'd say everyone's got a pretty good opinion of one another and we're all we all work well together and shit like that and That's good. we have fun together as well so it, it, it's it's nice so what do you what do you think of the music industry as a whole right now i mean mm, um <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I, I have a hard time talking shit on it, you know, because there's a lot of great music that comes from, you know, what's on the radio and stuff like that and what's popular and, and the different eras that it kind of trends towards. But uh, right now, I think the biggest asset to any band is using the Internet. I mean, that's that's what everyone's first go to thing is to search yeah. up a band or, you know, even listen to music sometimes. So. We've been really trying to focus on staying on top of our web presence and shit like that, and 
we're we're on Facebook all the fucking time, posting about everything, and we, you know we, we're kind of we're just pouring ourselves out as much as possible, just so we can get you know a, an audience to listen to our shit. I notice like the bands that don't do that as much have like a harder time, but you know I guess they just rely on pure talent or something like that. I don't know. We, you have we, to. We're trying to we're trying to come across. It. Yeah, I mean we're we're trying to come across as a band you know that's got you know the full package and shit like that. So. Right. We're trying to we're trying to bring people, you know, the the show live. We're trying to bring people the good recordings. We're trying to bring people, you know, the the involvement online and in different. So, you know, we want to be where the fans are. So, wherever that is, that's what we're trying to do. I mean, it it's a good time right now with all the social networking and all the you know, like Twitter, like you said, Facebook, Reverb Nation. Yeah. It's a really good one. I mean, it's really good for these bands to take advantage of all this technology. Yeah, and I mean, you know, it doesn't take that much to do, just sitting there and kind of updating, you know, bullshitting on Twitter or whatever you got to do. And uh, I think it's it's one of, you know, I mean, at one, at one, on one side, you know, the whole music industry sucks and it's hard to get heard and stuff like that. But on the, you know, the other, the flip side of the coin, it's possibly the easiest it's ever been. You know, it's, it's right. kind of like a paradox going on. But, you know, it's, if you can get on the internet and you can spam out your shit to everybody i mean there's no there's no telling who's going to like it who's going to pick it up who's going to start following it you know right. so that's that's kind of the what we've gone into thinking and believing you know it, with this whole band and everything that we've kind of done with it and you know we're trying to at least get ourselves out there to people that will you know dig our shit pass it on to their friends and hopefully get us a fan base at some point and we've done a pretty pretty good job so far i think of that it, it take it takes time but you know what all it takes is one person with the right connections and, and there you are you know what i mean yeah but you don't get that sitting We're, on your ass at home you know watching porn all night either you got to put yourself yeah. out there <laughs> i mean that's half of it yes but i mean <laughs> <laughs> but uh you know it's 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 kind of a bitch it's just i it's it's just a weird time that we live in so it's you got to kind of reinvent yeah, you know what what people tell you and kind of you know go with a different kind of outlook on things as opposed to just kind of trying to focus solely on shows because you know if you if you're starting out you you start to kind of realize a lot of things number one you're not going to get to play anywhere cool unless you pay number know, two that sucks yeah, and it, it, it's really weird. It's it's you know whenever I talk to people that have been in bands and stuff, you know the older crowd they they're they're super against it, and a lot of other bands too are you know they fucking hate it because you get shafted a lot of the times. You, there's a lot of promoters out there that are just trying to hype up everything, and uh, once you show up for the show and shit with your four hundred bucks in hand, they they take your money and then you play to nobody. It's just like what the fuck are you supposed to do? You know? Yeah, I don't get that. Why do they charge you to play? When they don't bring in people, or you know, people they expect you to do everything. Yeah, bring, you know, bring I mean, two hundred people with you, or whatever. There aren't really any promoters anymore. The bands are the promoters. The bands are the managers. You know, it's all an in-house deal now, and it's really, it's kind of sad. But I mean, it's just like I, I totally get it because you get a lot of bands that just don't give a fuck, and they'll just show up and. And uh, it's not worth their time. It's you know at some points because if you got a shitty band in there and no one no one wants to listen to them, you don't have anyone at the bar buying drinks, and then you That's you true. end up in the red. You know, so yeah. I can see it on their side, but you know it's just it's hard for you know a band that's starting out to really get in a large you know uh, audience's presence, you know, and just kind of get a chance to play because everyone everyone just like waiting for you to suck, <laughs> and until you give them. And yeah, until you until you give them a reason to you know not believe that you know that right. then you're you know uh, it's it's you're better off. But I mean, you made a perfect <laughs> example when you said you're trying to give your sticker to that dude. And he's like, I don't want it. And then when he saw you guys play, he's like, Oh yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know it, it, it's it's hard because you're when you're in a band, you hear a lot of that shit that they hear. You know, like right. they're we play. Very, I, I hate to say this, but I, we played with only a handful of really, you know, talented musicians in the time we've been a band. And mm -hmm. I mean, you know, a lot of that goes into just work ethic, how how seriously these people are treating it, and you know what kind of background they have in music. But there's a lot of shit out there, dude. I mean, I've heard a lot of fucking awful, you know, bullshit. <laughs> that, you know, have have a bigger following than us, and isn't that you amazing? Know, it's like, 
it's just like, what the fuck are we doing wrong? But, you know, it's, it's all a matter of opinion, you know, and it, right. it really comes down to who can bring the biggest crowd for these guys. And if that's the, if that's, if the shitty music brings the big crowd, they don't give a fuck. They'll listen to it every night, you know, <laughs> but for, you know, a band that plays better music and has less of a crowd, it's kind of hard for them to give a fuck because they're just like, well, no one else really does. Why should I kind of mentality? And that's what kind of screws people over in the end. But, I think, you know, just being persistent has got to be the biggest, you know, you know, uh, goal just to kind of stay out there and really stay in the public eye and or whatever kind of public you're working with, you know, just trying to keep keep your your band fresh in everyone's mind. That's kind of the ultimate goal for any band, I think. That's very true, man. I mean, you can't lose sight of why you're doing it. You know what I mean? You got to have a goal and, and love what you do. And music's like a great thing, a great gift that we have that you know you can share with everybody i mean what else can you do that's more powerful than music to me it, it yeah. says a lot about people you know what i'm saying yeah and i mean it's it's really the only kind of medium you have to really express yourself you know exactly. artistically i mean you can do it with a lot of different ways but i think the most entertaining the most fun to kind of do is is music for sure it's all i've ever really done in my life i mean when I was getting out of high school, I was trying to figure out what the fuck I was going to do. You know, I wasn't. Really, I, I have a lot of things that I'm good at, but it's not like anything that I've really like put enough time and effort and thought into. Where I'm just like, yeah, that seems like something I want to do the rest of my life. But okay. when, when it comes to music, I've I've already been doing this my whole life, so it just seems like the obvious route for me just to keep going with it and keep pushing for my you know my dreams and my ultimate goals and everything else. So do you play any? We'll see where. It's- yeah, I play guitar. I've been playing since sixth grade, and nice. uh, I used to play like saxophone and shit like that, like in <laughs> elementary school and middle school. But that was a long time ago. I don't think I could still do that the same way. But um, yeah, I, I, I've I've kind of had like a, a lot of different you know stuff that I've dabbled with, but, right. but I've always I've always wrote, written stuff like that. So being the singer was just kind of the obvious step up for me. I I was never really like you know into singing in front of people either. I was just kind of like sit there and fool around while the other dudes would sit there and you know make up riffs and shit like that. And then it kind of just turned into where I was the singer and and I never really even sang for them yet. They were just like, yeah you can just be the singer because it wasn't really that serious at that point. <laughs> right. And then they all liked what I was, they all liked what I was doing and shit. So it just kind of stuck that way. And then it just kind of got you know snowballed and got bigger and bigger and bigger. And here we are, you know. So dude, that takes balls. I I, I don't know if I could ever just stand out there and sing. Yeah, I mean, it's shit. It's 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 scary at first, and you kind of got to get over the like. I remember when I was a little kid, my mom was like, "Well, you should get singing classes and stuff." <laughs> like that. And right now, I'd be down to do it, but at the time, I was just like, I, I don't know. I feel like that's really fucking gay, you know? Like, I don't know. But there was something in me that was just like, "Nah, dude, that's that's not a good way to you know get be popular in high school." I, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck was going through my brain, but. You know, I was just kind of do. It was something that I'd do by myself, and I would just kind of sit there and play guitar and write lyrics and stuff like that, and just be weird. And then, uh, then I kind of just started showing it off to people, you know, little by little, and people started liking what I was doing. So I was happy to keep going with it. And then you kind of just lose all sight of shyness and shit at that point. You just don't really give a fuck. So like when you guys played Shamrocks, you, I was like, damn, who are these guys? I know Joe from Terra Valley said, hey, you gotta check these guys out. They're they're they kick ass. I'm like, okay, I'll check them out. And I didn't realize that was you sitting in front of us. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I know, but what's what was funny is, you no no sooner that you're starting to sink, you're like, Let, let's get everybody up here, and you call everybody up to the front, and yeah, pretty much everybody went up there that was going to go up there. But that's mm. that was cool, man. Just got everybody into it right off the bat. You know what I mean? Yeah, because the way Shamrocks is set up, you know, you're you're set up in like this little room that's kind of off to the side that no one really knows about until you start dragging people in there, and and. Uh, no one's really like real keen on being on the dance floor or anything like that. I don't know why, but you know, the, the normally it's just like a couple people that'll walk up there and have to be like, like right in the band's face, you know. It's just, <laughs> I was like, well, shit, you know, I need I need a little bit more room filled in here, so I had to bring everyone in and kind of have them join in with us and shit. And the Sarah Billion guys are cool. I was handing them the mic a couple times and shit like that, and they were getting into it. And I have a buddy, D'Lo, who who's in a like a like a scream band and shit. He's like a death metal band, and mm-hmm. and uh, 
the, the for the song Give Me the Truth, I'll have him kind of scream out the chorus and shit, and we'll kind of go like back and forth with a little bit. So I had John nice. do that for me this time since he wasn't there. So it was really cool to get everyone involved and, you know, have everyone kind of into what we're doing and shit. So it was fun. Do you guys uh, ever videotape your shows? You know what? We, uh, our lead guitarist, his dad, is pretty adamant about being at every single show and videotaping it. So, you know, regardless of whether we want to hear it or not, we pretty much have almost every single show, you know, that we've ever done. Just about, not every single one, but, you know, pretty close. And uh, it's we kind of watch our, the footage afterwards like a football team, you know, like like really critiquing ourselves. I was going to ask you that. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and it's 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 fucking annoying because I I don't really like to listen to myself, you know, and it, like when I when I'm up there and I can I can hear my drummer's like thoughts, you know, my drummer's such a he's so he's so adamant about right. being perfect, you know, he's a very he's a huge perfectionist. And uh, you know, now it's just I get so so uh critical of myself just because I already know what he's going to say, you know, we'll, we'll <laughs> right. listen I'll, I'll be flat in a certain part or something like that or my voice will crack or something like that when I'm, when I've just had it. And I'm just like waiting for my drummer just to look up and just like, dude, you got to fucking fix that. You know, he doesn't really say anything, but I just, I feel like ashamed at that point. Right. It's really weird. He, like this guilt trip kind of feel and it's, and it sucks, but it's just, you know, it makes you better. And I think that's, it's made a big difference in what we've been doing because you can kind of track the progress and shit right. from our first show to our last show. And, and uh, you know, it's it, it's made a huge difference. We have to have that kind of perfectionist view just right. to keep bettering ourselves, you know. But at the same time, it, it, it's it's uh, it's kind of nerve wracking every time we get the the footage in and shit because we never know exactly how it went, you know, like full picture it, until we see it on. Yeah, you know. I have a guest in here in the chat room that wants to know how old you were when you first got in a band. Um, this is my first band. I've never been in a band prior to this, but, um, I was 19 at the time. I'm 20 now. So, I mean, we've kind of, we, we've come a long way. I was, we were all just like, at least I was, I, I was kind of in a kid mindset. And I think this band's helped me grow up a lot in this past year and kind of take initiative with what I'm trying to do with it and put a lot more towards my goal, you know, trying to get this band out there to everybody. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, people in the chat room are digging it, man. I'm glad, man. I, you I think know. you're fucking hilarious. <laughs> no, this is a good, yeah, that's good, man. Your your trip to talk to, man. Some cool, some cool stuff. Um, <laughs> so, what what does the future hold for the Armager? Well, like I said, the T-shirt thing. We're trying to get a bunch of merch out to people, and you know, uh, we'll probably have some free giveaways on our Facebook. So everyone, try and get connected on there. If we'll, we'll link if you check out the links on the website on buzz radio you can find us and trying to get uh a lot more shows we're you know eventually we want to tour but we're broke right now uh expect a ep within the next couple months uh of 20 2012 actually this is going to be the last year we'll be on earth so i know huh you guys better pump out some good stuff (laughs) and make it happen (laughs) gotta make this last year count fuck man i hope (laughs) the plans are wrong but uh shit dude um yeah, so our our next EP, stay up for that, and then um, we're gonna have you know some new material out pretty soon. We just wrote a song last night. We're kind of stoked on, so we're gonna kind of mold that in our next couple shows and see how we can see how the crowd's reaction is to it and see what we're gonna do with it. And on top of that, we're just trying to find fans, man. We just want people out there to follow us and kind of you know be as stoked on it as we are. And we're we're doing a pretty good job so far. We got we got a good good following that kind of comes by to our shows, and we got a lot of supportive friends. So That's hopefully good. for this next year, we can kind of we can kind of extend our circle up elsewhere and kind of get out into uh, you know Hollywood and Inland Empire a little bit more and stuff like that. Well, Buzz Radio is always going to help. I mean, we're trying to get your music out there, playing on iTunes twenty four seven. So who knows who's listening? Oh, yeah. Probably people all over the world, but uh, yeah, we'll help any way we can too, yeah. and you know, support dude, your, your shows and all that. Yeah, dude, I appreciate that. That'd be great. And, I mean, you guys have already done an awesome job, man. I'm stoked. I always tune in, trying to like you know hear who, like see if I can name any of the bands that you guys are playing, and I'm stoked on it, dude. You guys got a cool thing going too, and I appreciate all the people that listen in and uh, are stoked on our stoked on our stuff and stoked on the local metal scene too just in general just it's nice to have a a metal crowd finally oh i know you know what sucks is we don't really have a metal station out here really 
Yeah, I mean, you get like a you get the ten o'clock uh, Metallica hour and shit on K Rock, <laughs> I think, that. or something. Yeah, but I mean, I'm not usually in my car driving around <laughs> at ten o'clock. <laughs> yeah, but it's all it's all time left, here. dude. You know what I mean? A lot of alternative shit, and it's a lot of it's a lot of generic kind of you know, like techno-ish kind of melding synthesizer <laughs> with a. I don't know I feel I get I get like a real like. 80s disco kind of synthesizer flock of seagulls vibe from a lot of this shit and it's it's like super like just repackaged crap to me <laughs> yeah it but, is you know I, I still listen in i still listen in just to see if there's anything else because I'm, I'm open to everything you know i'm not mm-hmm. i'm not very close-minded when it comes to music but you know i'm just i'm really adamant about people that actually have talent that's that's all i really care about you know because the genre doesn't really necessarily matter to me it's just more so the actual like thought that went into what they're doing as opposed to them talking about their dick or their pussy or some <laughs> shit like that you know just this, this washed up shit that i've just been hearing over and over and over again from like those dudes like lmfao and oh my fucking god Nick dude, don't Nick even Hoff, get me you know, started that on shit. that shit like, and it just it makes me it's it's fucking annoying because you know it's 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 taking an audience like you know that could be going out to bars and shit and having a good time listening to live music and bringing them into clubs and shit where you know it's just a a dude pressing a button basically to play the song and it, the the you know it's a lot easier for them but for us you know it makes it it makes it frustrating you know well i can tell you this there's a ton of local metal bands out there man and i'm i'm getting turned on to oh, a lot yeah. of new music and it's just i'm shocked that this stuff isn't as popular as it is but i'm kind of glad it isn't either but cuz i like it to be underground but you know these guys need yeah. to make a living i would like for them to make a living off their craft but it's kind of hard yeah. right now I just like not having to search for music. That's why I like the radio so much. I like it just kind of being played for me, and I don't know what I'm <laughs> going to get, and I just just kind of roll with it, you know. So whenever it's good, dude, I'm stoked on it. I mean, shit. There's a lot of, there's a lot of like, I've been finding out more and more with uh, this whole band and everything and just networking in general that, you know, there's a lot of talent out there, dude, especially, oh, yeah. you know, in our uh, Chino Hills, Bray area, you know, the whole, mm-hmm. this whole kind of, like, spot we got in southern california is just a pretty good place to be is for music in general and for basically anything you're looking to do so i i think it's i think it's nice you know that we can kind of keep some stuff on the underground but i'd like to hear a lot of the metal that uh, you know that i like at least kind of come along on the radio a little bit more oh, yeah. often and stuff like that but thank got, god for buzz radio dude <laughs> yeah, yeah, i wish we radio. were like a fm Real station true shit dude. Yeah, dude, that'd be fucking awesome. But, uh, yeah, I know what you mean. I'll, I'd like to turn on the radio and hear Pantera once in a while or whatever, but you'll never hear that. Yeah, yeah. and you know, that's that's a big fucking shame, dude, because fucking <laughs> Pantera just rocks my socks, dude. They're so sick. And even, like, stuff like Tool, you know, I mean, oh, Tool's dude, pretty Tool. underground, but I just want to hear some Tool on the radio. I mean, like, this, like Schism or The Pot or some shit. Or, <laughs> I don't know, dude. I don't know if you listen to Mastodon, but that's my shit right there. I've, I've heard a few songs. Yeah, they're good. Oh, dude. I saw them live, and they're fucking amazing, along with uh, Dillinger Escape Plan and Red Fang. They're nice. they're doing like a tour right now. We caught them on their, their date at Hollywood in the Wiltern, and it was fucking awesome show, dude. I, I just like to hear something like that on the radio once in a while, just to kind of make me believe that music's not such shit anymore, you know? So yeah, <laughs> I, I know. Work that again. But hey, dude, I think we're gonna wind this down. But you are you're awesome, and I thank you so much for coming <laughs> and doing this. I mean, you know, it was just it was it was a lot of fun. You're freaking hilarious. Yeah, man. Thanks for giving me my first radio interview, dude. This is fucking <laughs> cool for me too, dude. Appreciate it, dude. Any really last awesome. shout outs you want to give out to anybody or anything? I want to shout out to all my all my friends on Facebook, all my followers, everyone that's tuning in. I hope you guys check us out. You know, we we really like to get involved with the fans it's and 10 shit. And, oh, it's ten o'clock. o'clock. Uh, I hope you guys, <laughs> yeah. I hope you guys, I hope you guys enjoy listening to my shit. Uh, please, please give us a listen soon. And thank you again, Buzz Radio, and thank you again, Steve, and no. everyone else, and appreciate it. You guys are awesome. What would be the best? web link you can put out right now to uh, give to people to contact you or hear your music go to facebook.com slash the armager t-h-e-a-r-m-i-g-e-r you can you find are. everything you need on there and uh we'll have our website up soon i don't know what the hell's going on with it right now i just checked it and uh, <laughs> it's, it's been down you can also check out the armager.com we're on that too but facebook's just the, the easiest thing to update so we're on that the most if you want to get a hold of us that's probably the best way 
Okay, man. Hey, thanks for coming on, and uh, we're going to close the show with uh, When They Ride. Anything you want to tell us about this song? The song's about uh, loosely based on the apocalypse and uh, nice. you know other good stuff like that. So I hope you guys rock out. It's one of my favorite songs. Okay, and thanks for joining BuzzRadio.net. And this was Wes from the Armager, and we're out of here. Later. Peace. I will return again just to make them all repent from the fall of my relent. It's clear where they were sent. The seal's been broken and the scroll has been unfurled. Not a word is spoken when they ride over the world. When I looked up, I saw them ride till the population hide. Looked to every coast and died. Destruction from the other side. I've seen it in dreams I can barely remember. But I saw him reap the souls of the river. Whoa!